The child embodies our ultimate vision that every Filipino learner will realize their full potential and ultimately reach their biggest dreams, no matter how high, no matter how hard, through quality education. And as our learners aim to soar, we must continue to elevate our goals. Rising, the kite is our emblem of aspiration to deliver the brand of quality in Philippine basic education. The quadrants of the soaring kite symbolize the key reform areas in forwarding this cause. As we embark on this aggressive reform to yield upskilled teachers, well-developed curriculum, improved learning environment, and responsive multi-stakeholder cooperation. Using the colors of our flag, the logo symbolizes our unity and serves as a reminder that it takes a nation to educate a child. Together, we as a nation will have to move forward and gain more momentum so that our vision of quality basic education for all shall take flight. Sama-sama sa pagsulong ng edukalidad. Hello, Mrs. Morgan. Remember how hard it was to get your students' attention? Oh, Mr. Jeski, any explosive ideas? And you, Mr. Fisher, the world keeps turning, right? OK, we're past all that, because now we have Microsoft Educator Center. Trainings, courses, webinars, programs, badges, points, certificates. Join now and get yourself ready for the new school year. Teach your best. Tumama sa bansa ang COVID-19 pandemic dahilan upang maantala ang normal na daloy ng pamumuhay at trabaho sa lahat ng sektor, kabilang na ang kagawaran ng edukasyon. Nang ipatupad ang Luzon Lockdown, inilunsad ang Dapid Commons upang tuloy ang pagkatuto ng mga learners habang nasa bahay. 
Sa kabila ng mabigat na hamon sa ilalim ng new normal, patuloy na nagpunyagi ang DepEd upang maghanap at maghatid ng mga alternatibong pamamaraan upang magpatuloy ang edukasyon sa pinakaligtas at pinakaangkop na paraan. Sa ilalim ng Learning Continuity Plan, layunin ng DepEd na magpatuloy ang edukasyon ng hindi nakokompromiso ang kapakanan at kalusugan ng mga guro at mag-aaral. Isusulong ng DepEd ang tatlong pangunahing layuning angkop na proteksyon, kaugnay ng mga health standards at safety protocols para sa ligtas na school year, patuloy na edukasyon sa pamamagitan ng blended learning, distance learning at homeschooling na angkop sa kapasidad ng bawat mag-aaral at mabisang aksyon sa pakikipagtulungan sa lokal na pamahalaan at mga partner organizations upang maihatid ang dekalidad ng edukasyon para sa lahat. Bawat DepEd Division ay bumuo rin ng sarili nilang Learning Continuity Plan upang gabayan ang mga guro, mga magulang at mga mag-aaral sa bagong pamamaraan ng pag-aaral gamit ang online, modular at TV and radio-based instructions. Gamit ang iba't ibang learning modalities, nagdaos ng dry run ang mga paaralan sa iba't ibang bahagi ng bansa. Katuwang ang mga local government units at mga education partners upang maging handa sa bagong sistema ng edukasyon. Isinagawa rin ang mga pagsasanay at orientasyon sa mga magulang upang maging epektibong katuwang sa pag-aaral ng kanilang mga anak. Sa anumang hamon o sitwasyon, handa ang DepEd. Handang kumilos, handang tumugon, at handang magserbisyo. Ang dami ng mga pagsusubok at challenges ang naharap at napagtagumpayan ng ating Department of Education. Tuwing may pagsusubok, priority palagi natin ang ating learners at ang ating mga teachers sa tulong ng parents at saka partners at ang buong bansa. Ngayon, sa hinaharap natin itong new normal na sinasabi nila, matatag ang ating kagawaran, matatag ang DepEd, dahil pinagtibay na tayo ng panahon, kayang-kaya natin ito sa tulong ninyo. G'day everyone, I'm Mark. As a teacher and a former principal, I know that professional learning often comes at the end of a very long day. But there are exciting, less structured ways to be in the driver's seat of your own lifelong learning. A great place to start is by engaging with our Microsoft Innovative Educator or MIE community. This global community is big, in fact it's enormous. Our MIEs love connecting. Monthly tweet meets are global gatherings of inspiring educators around big topics and their Facebook group acts as a persistent home for discussions and shared activities. Another way teachers are learning within communities is through Microsoft Teams. Now, greater teacher collaboration improves teaching across schools and teams. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought unprecedented changes to our usual ways of living. But the Department of Education remains unfazed by these challenges to fulfill the mission of Sulong Edo Kalidad, the rallying call for national effort to deliver quality basic education to all Filipinos, which involve aggressive reforms in the four key areas. The K-12 curriculum review and update, improving the learning environment, teachers upskilling and reskilling, engagement of stakeholders for support and collaboration to move forward together as we prepare the education system for the future. The call for Sulong Edukalidad will continue and we have built the framework of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan or the BELCP to 
put the needs of the learners at top priority. DepEd's DELCP is the major response and commitment to protect the health, safety, and well-being of learners, teachers, and personnel. The plan aims to provide opportunities to continue education even in these trying times with a BELCP in place, supported by unprecedented number of diverse stakeholders from the academe, media, industry groups, NGOs, business and private individuals, Sulong Edukalidad will be able to sustain the aims in its reform for quality basic education. In our journey towards quality education, we have established the four pillars of aggressive reforms from the start, and we have been continuing to progress in these pillars. In improving the learning environment, we took action in the construction and rehabilitation of school buildings, ensured the availability of learning materials and equipment, and prioritized our last mile schools. The challenges of the pandemic also brought to light the urgent need to upgrade our ICT infrastructure to service the needs of education. In terms of the teachers of skilling and reskilling, we were able to establish more innovative professional standards for teachers and school heads. We have aligned the professional development of teachers with their career progression to track their development as part of the National Educators Academy of the Philippines Transformation. With the launch of the Education Futures Program, where we will be focusing on innovative actions and solutions to improve the state of our education, we are now more than ready to start a new journey and continue our fight for quality education for all Filipino learners. Finally, We've given high importance to the engagement of stakeholders for support and collaboration. In support of this, we have convened the Philippine Forum for Accessible Quality Basic Education or the Education Forum, which will leverage other partnerships for education quality and strengthen partnership with the Philippine Normal University as the country's national center for teacher education. The department has also been developing a professional development program for teachers and school leaders in order to equip them with the skills, materials, and data that will allow them to help their students prepare for PISA 2022. This intervention consists of the following components online training for teachers and school leaders, development of learning materials and practice tests for students, deepening the analysis of the PISA 2018 results, and supporting school-level action research. Now that the year is about to end, our commitment to Sulo Edukalidad will continue and will be far from being gone. With a lot at stake, Considering our new knowledge and experience from this year's challenges, we are equipped to face a new future. As we head on to the future where we will face many challenges and uncertainties, the department will always be the guardian of every Filipino learner's right to education. Sino ba ang hindi naapektuhan? Sino ba ang hindi nag-alala? Sino ba ang hindi nalito? Lahat tayo ay naapektuhan. Lahat tayo ay nag-aalala. Lahat tayo ay nalito. Dahil binago ng pandemyang dulot ng COVID-19, ang paraan ng paumuhay ng lahat ng mga Pilipino sa anumang sektor ka nabibilang. Tumigil ang panandalian ang ating mga nakagawian. Tumigil ang lahat ng uri ng transaksyon. Tumigil ang lahat ng operasyon ng mga paaralan. Nakalilito. Nakakaba. Paano na ang kinabukasan ng mga kabataan? Paano na tayo sa hinaharap?
Opisyal na nilulunsad ng kagawaran ng edukasyon sa paunguna ng Office of the Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction ang DepEd Teaches. Ito ay isang online na programa na gagabay sa mga guro, tagapangasiwa, magulang at mag-aaral hinggil sa mga pagbabago sa batayang edukasyon ngayong new normal. Ang DepEd Teaches ay angkla sa sulong edukalidad na nakatuon sa apat na pangunahing pangailangan ng mapunyaging reforma. Tungo sa makalidad na pagtuturo at pagkatuto. Una, pagre-review at pagsasapanahon ng kurikulum ng K-12. Ikalawa, pagpapaunlad ng kapaligiran pampagkatuto. Ikatlo, paglinang ng mga bagong kasanayan sa mga guro. At ang ikaapat, ang paikipag-ugnay sa mga stakeholder para sa suporta at kolaborasyon. Sa pamagitan ng virtual learning platform, ang DepEd Teaches ang magsisilbing bukas na komunidad ng pagsasanay na titipon sa mga guro, tagapamunong pang-edukasyon at sa sino mang may pagnanain sa pagtataguyod ng kalidad na edukasyon sa bansa at sa pagtagumpay ng bawat Pilipinong mag-aaral. Ang mga official, education specialist, Learning Content Expert at Outstanding Teacher ng DepEd ang magiging tagapanayam na magbabahagi ng kanilang kaalaman at kasanayan sa kurikulum, pagtuturo at pagkatuto, pagtataya at lahat ng kaugnay na mahalaga sa proseso ng pagtuturo at pagkatuto sa new normal. Bilang mga frontliner ng classroom, inaasahang magiging aktibo ang mga guro sa programang ito. Ang mga tema at paksa ay ang kop sa kanilang pangangailangan at konteksto sa pamagitan ng accessible na platform, ang social media. Sumali na sa OUCI Family sa DepEd Teaches kung sama-sama mapahuhusay pa ang mga guro, kung sama-sama higit na malilinang natin ang mga mag-aaral. So let us make the most of the situation that we are into right now. Fantastic afternoon to all of our viewers. And we are delighted to see you again here in Dana. How are you today? Hello, Sir July. So, good afternoon, everyone. So, here in the Petitious, episodes are thematically arranged that are tailor fit to your needs. So, we make sure that every aspect in teaching and learning is given equal importance for our ultimate goal is to sharpen your skills as 21st century educators. And so we wholeheartedly invite all of you again, our dear friends, watching right now on DepEd Philippines Facebook page, DepEd Tayo, and those in DepEd on DepEd YouTube channel to visit, like, and follow the official Facebook page of DepEd Teaches. And it won't take much of your time to share DepEd Teaches to your friends. You know, they say that the big risk we should avoid at all costs is the risk of doing nothing. So what are you waiting for? It's time to like and follow DepEd Teaches. You are most welcome in our growing community. Last week, we had that event.
evaluation for the theme content, knowledge, and pedagogy that covered to share some insight on how here are some of our uh, participants' answer. One participant said, in order to apply my learnings in first century skills in episode 12 are very useful. Another response that we got is, is this, despite the pandemic situation, DepEd never gets tired of thinking and planning on how teachers or how they help teachers to perform their duties in smooth and safe manner. And also another viewer said that learning never stops. It In whatever situation we are in, we should educate ourselves. But from last week, and we are very pleased. All right, so it's very nice to read all those valuable insights from our viewers, Sir July. We just want to remind them that you should not skip any episode so that you can pass the evaluation, which you can only take once. So for you to receive your certificate of participation, sign none other than by our undersecretary, Yusek Justado San Antonio. So if you're not able to catch on what was discussed, just visit the Petitia's Facebook page to rewatch and take down notes they will be more confident and more prepared to pass the short evaluation. You know, we don't want to do something in vain. And so assessment is important in every learning opportunity, just like here on DepEd Teaches. Again, we want to reiterate that we all want you to pass the evaluation for you to receive your certificates. But of course, there is a standard process that we must follow, and that is the evaluation component. So speaking of assessment for the new theme here on DepEd Teaches, episodes 15 to 18 will revolve around assessment and reporting. So expect in this new theme that we will talk about various types of formative and summative assessment, consideration on reliability and validity, non-traditional assessment, metacognitive strategies, and in today's episode, we will learn about intervention and remediation. You know, they say that assessment is an important peg of an educational triad from the curriculum component to instruction then followed by the assessment. So obviously, the realization and actualization of learning outcomes is what we really want to see among our learners. And this can be done through proper assessment. Okay, so let's try to sustain the intellectual interactivity here on the teachers. We will ask now questions, two questions, the ones that we've been doing in the past episodes. So please join us in the comment section by sharing your answers in the group. Okay, so for question one, please show question one on the screen. Give one misconception about assessment. You may want to know if there is a misconception about assessment that you are aware of. And you notice some are still believing onto this, but this misconception or myth must be debunked. So this is an overarching question as we explore and delve deeper on the four episodes under the theme assessment and reporting. So assessment is not a new topic, but we can't help that we are sometimes confused or probably struggling how to do it effectively, where to start, and what's our role in assessment. And so in today's episode, we will see one side of assessment through the lens of remediation and intervention. 
And so for the next question, For the second question, what specific intervention or remediation strategy have you been using in your classroom teaching? Again, what specific intervention or remediation strategy have you been using in your classroom teaching? Again, we invite our viewers to write your answers now in the top section of our FB lives in your remediation or interve intervention strategy. As we know, learning doesn't stop in giving them the contextualized assessment that you have been collected. Some of the projects and activities that we can adopt to provide academic support. to our learners is specifically on how can we partner with parents and help our learners reach the standards. They It might be a different pace, but of course, we want that. We will now be introducing our resource speaker first for our new team, assessment and reporting. It is our honor to introduce our resource person, okay? Some staunch believers of excellence become the very personification of such virtue. They serve as sterling examples for those who aspire to do great things, either because they are destined to do so or due to hard work and diligence. One of them is Dr. Benjamin Diaz Paragas. He set out to share his vision in education from his colorful journey as a bemedaled student in all levels and becoming a classroom teacher in 1989, rising from the ranks as master teacher, school head, assistant schools division superintendent, assistant regional director, and as regional director. His stints in government service and his many involvements in his other fields of interest paid off dearly as he was awarded the following prestigious awards, Most Outstanding Alumnus of the University of La Salette, the ASM Trophy of Excellence by the Local Government of Santiago City, the Model Employee Award by the Local Government of Quirino, and Metrobank Outstanding Teacher Award in 2001, to name a few. Also, our resource speaker. First of all, may I greet the Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction, Yusek Dads, uh, Ma'am Rose Villanesa, Chief Bureau of Learning Delivery. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Today, I will talk about uh, intervention and remediation strategies for learners in distance learning modalities, the region two, experience. Let me start with a simple quotation which runs this way. You get into the biggest fights with the people you care about the most because those are relationships worth fighting for. You know, the fight for the future of our learners as well as the future of this country is the biggest fight we are into. We are not giving up on our learners, no matter how challenging the situation. We are not giving up today. We are not giving up forever. 
Our department made the best decision to continue the school year even if it means being flooded with the daily issues brought about by the health crisis. Our beloved Secretary Liling declared October 5, 2020 as the day of victory for the Filipino learners. We are not immobilized by fear and anxiety. In fact, we are more than inspired to give our best and succeed in the battle because it's the future of the learners that matters and that are at stake. The fulfillment of our vision remains to be our top priority. Our situation now is showing them the harsh realities of life and we are not backing off if only to make them better prepared the future caretakers of this nation. Quality is never compromised, even in the new setup. In fact, it is reinforced. Provision of CLM, CI technical assistance in crafting various interventions and mechanisms was conducted in the region. SDOs crafted their own programs that are aligned to their BELCP anchored with the regional office BELCP. Sample programs that we implement. First, Project Catch 1.0 and 2.0 Cuddling at Risk Children through Home-Based E-Mentoring. Second, Project CIDHI, Curriculum Implementation Division Harmonized Interventions and Innovations. Third, we also implement Project Perfect TA, Pupils Enhancement in Reading for Effective Comprehension and Teachers Teaching Advantage. We are aware of the main challenges. For parents at home, as distance learning shifts child care responsibilities during work hours from the school to the home, it places an additional burden on adults who may also be working remotely while lessons are expected to be going on. Many K-12 students especially those in lower grades, still need constant supervision by adults during the day. Even if the supervision required is minimal, parents may still need to assist their children with the schoolwork. For many parents and students, this period is also their first exposure to distance learning which they may find difficult to manage because of technical difficulties, working with multiple children, or feeling unprepared to provide the necessary instructional support. How about those parents at work? Although many parents are working remotely during the COVID-19 outbreak, a significant number of essential workers, including healthcare, grocery store owners, transportation operators, and delivery workers, still need to carry out their duties away from home. For children of these parents who might still be getting dropped off at daycare or away from home, distance learning may not work in quite the same way. It is not clear when COVID-19 outbreak will be contained and many parents and educators are having difficult pl time planning around so much uncertainty. Some schools have closed for the inter-academic year. 
while others are still taking a wait and see approach. Whatever the strategy, it's no question that the inability to predict how the COVID-19 outbreak will unfold for both students and parents introduces another layer of complication to distance learning at this time. Many of the challenges to distance learning amid the COVID-19 outbreak are unavoidable, but some strategies can help keep learning achievable and productive during this period. Educators, students, and their parents all deserve credit and acknowledgement for all the work they're doing to help students maintain continuity in their education pursuit during this challenging time. Reading and counting to learn, the ultimate goal of Key Stage 1. Building the foundation of Key Stage 1 through mastering the emergent domains of literacy and numeracy. The Every Child a Reader program is still the battle cry in the Key Stage 1 through the ELN program. To address the challenge of the pandemic through blended learning, establishing school lock session via online or offline is also an effective strategy. Our SDOs are conducting online pre-test and post-test aligned with ELN principles. CLM provides TA on the conduct of the said online pre- and post-test. Project KBB Kwento Kwenta ng Bawat Bata, which is implemented in the school's division of Quirino, proves to be worthwhile. Based on the online pretest results, schools are now able to identify, to identify learners at risk to undergo remediation or intervention programs. And we are implementing this in Region 2. First, Project Aruga, assisting reinforcement and uplifting goals and achievement for elementary school learners. Project Vahai, visiting and assisting activities of the young learners and interim guidelines in SDO Batanes for learners at risk. Localized reading exercises were uploaded to local portals. These are available offline and online through a digital package. Project DMAIS, Development of Mathematics and Authentic Instructional Materials across all grade levels. Consideration for online remediation, learners' readiness and capacity to use the gadget and parent partnership also proves very essential and helpful. On-site home visitation, where learners who are not capable of using gadget are being visited, but in the process, our teachers observe the IATF health protocols. We also implement the audio-video modular intervention programs, which are uploaded to portals for easier access on the part of our teachers and learners. We also establish a very strong partnership with parents to follow up learners' pace and level. Orientation with parents was conducted on how the child in mastering the competencies and the skills required are being helped. These materials are being uploaded into the portals. 
we develop school-based LR to enhance the most essential learning competencies. In the region, DepEd RO2 LRMS portal was created. Project provide of the Schools Division of Santiago City was also crafted, providing resources offline, variety of interactive, developed educational instructional materials. We also conduct proper orientation of the expected support to be given by the parent or guardian or older siblings. Check list of tasks is given. A child and community-centered education systems or access is likewise established. The creation of interim guidelines for possible monitoring evaluation and follow-up with strict guidelines to IATF protocols. We use varied platforms of communication for various purposes like text messaging, messenger, and other platform. We engage broad stakeholder support. We track regularly and give feedback of learners' performance to their parents. CLM conducted technical assistance in the implementation of the academic is in all schools in the region. This is our policy. All that we have done, we have done within this bound. We are facing the hardest battle through this COVID-19 pandemic, but it is also an opportunity to strengthen our bond as a community. When we work together as a team, nothing is impossible. We achieve more for the sake of our school children. This is our experience in DepEd Region 2. Mabalo, thank you, maraming salamat. Alright, so thank you so much, Dr. Benjamin Diaz Paragas, for sharing the best practices and possible strategies that our teachers can adopt in providing academic support through practical intervention and mimicization strategies. So to our viewers, just keep on sharing your insights and learning here on Deputy Teachers comment section. And more so, you can post on your personal Facebook page and Twitter. Don't forget to use the hashtag, I support Deputy Teachers, hashtag Deputy Teachers episode 15. So before we end, we have a few announcements. For episodes 15 to 18, we will only have a single registration and the evaluation will be given on episode 18. Okay, so that wraps up the first episode under the theme assessment and reporting. We hope you've been inspired to reflect on your current intervention and remediation strategies and find ways to improve and enhance these with the end goal in mind to help learners succeed. So on behalf of the curriculum and instruction, once again, thank you so much for generously sharing your time and enthusiasm. It is our earnest desire to always support you through DepEd Teachers, for our mission is empowering teachers, enabling learners. A pleasant afternoon, everyone.